Hello YouTube, welcome to another tutorial on using Daikon Forge GUI. Today I'm going to cover a very powerful feature of DF GUI known as data binding. Before we get started, I'm going to explain what this feature is and why it's so powerful. So what is data binding? In a nutshell, it's a way to specify that two pieces of data are related to each other. For example, data binding could be used to specify that the value of a slider and audio volume are related to each other, such that changing audio volume will update slider and changing the slider will update audio volume. In DF GUI, this is done with a property binding. You can bind the property of one component to the property of another component. This can either be one way, so that the uh, source's property is simply copied to the destination property, or two ways, so this can happen in both directions. Destination can modify source, and source can modify destination. Additionally, DF GUI includes event binding. This is a way to specify that a function on one component should be triggered when an event occurs on another component. For example, you might trigger a tween on one control when the on-click event of another control occurs. All of this can be done with zero coding. So let's get started with data binding. First, I'll show you how to use property binding. Let's bind the value of a slider control to the opacity of a button control. I have the slider and buttons already set up here. I'll add a property binding to the button. I need to assign the slider control to the source of this property binding. And I'm going to pick the uh, value property. And I'll bind that to the opacity property of my button. That's all that's required. Let's run this to test. As you can see, the opacity of the button changes when I move this slider. Now let's add an event binding. I have this other button over here with a tween already set up. In another tutorial, I'll show you how to add tweens to controls. I want this tween to play when the other button is clicked. Add an event binding. copy the first button, and I'll choose the click event, and copy the tween, and I'll choose the play method. Now when I click this button, the tween plays on the other control. That's all there is to it. We can also create custom scripts which can be property and event bound. I already have a script prepared here. And you can see all I have is a public float and a public method. There's no other requirements for these to be data bound. I'm going to add this custom script to my first button. Now I'll add a property binding. The source will be my slider. And the destination will be our custom component. I'll choose the value property. And it's bound to our test value float. I'll also set this to two way. Now run this. And watch, as I change the test value on our custom component, it automatically modifies the slider, and the button's opacity changes. Additionally, changing the, changing the uh, value of the slider will automatically change our float value. I'm also going to uh, add an event binding to our data, our custom component. This will trigger our method when onClick is called. Now run this. As you can see, our test method was in fact called.
You've now learned how to make use of the data binding features of DF GUI. Data binding can be a very powerful tool for adding complex functionality to UI with less code. In the next tutorial, I'll be covering tweens in DF GUI. Thanks for watching.